$150. That's how much your name, date of birth, address, email, and phone number were worth roughly 10 years ago on the black market. Today, according to the Financial Times, your data is worth less than $1. <laughs> See how cheap you are now? <laughs> Why? Well, because today we are more open towards sharing our personal information than ever before. And even if a dollar is not that much to lose, being impersonated and having, for example, a credit card or a mortgage opened on our name or your reputation being compromised will cost you much, much more. We often hear that big data is the world's newest natural resource that needs to be mined like gold and diamonds. And I agree, our data can offer all kinds of personalized services for the greater good. But if big data is a natural resource, then our personal data is its refined currency. So why should we just freely give money away? Would you just throw your money out of the window every day? It all comes back to control, having control over who has our data and how it's being used. In Switzerland, where I live, and in Europe at large, data privacy is a hot topic and it has been for the past 50 years. For that reason, around a decade ago, the European Commission funded a research project called Prime to develop a cryptographic technology that would enable Europeans to verify who they are online without sharing their personal information. And let me repeat that because it sounds like a paradox. Enable people to verify who they are online without sharing their personal information. Think about how many times you log into different websites, either revealing your personal data directly or letting them track your history and habits. One day I counted for myself, it was like 25 logins to email, social network, shopping. That's a lot of times we put ourselves out there. And not only online. In the US, you often have to show your driver's license or some kind of proven identification to purchase alcohol if you look under 21. And actually, in many places around the world, even people who are 30 or 40 years old still have to show their ID. Well, I guess some people might see it as a compliment. I do. <laughs> But when you show your driver's license to a cashier or bartender, think about how much private data you're just giving away. The fact is, you only need to prove that you're over 21, yet you're offering your full name, address, not to mention the full date, month and year of your birth. A data thief's dream. But what if we could just mask all this information and have our ID card simply say, she is older than 21, or the card is valid, or simply yes. With cryptography, we can. We call it the zero-knowledge proof, and just like it sounds, you learn nothing about the details of that person while still getting the proof to address the request. So think about the famous Rubik's Cube. How can I prove to you that I can solve it without revealing my technique? So with Rubik's Cube, it's quite simple. I just turn around, solve the cube, and give it back to you. So now I just proved that I can solve Rubik's Cube without revealing my technique. But what about my age? How can I prove to you that I'm old enough without revealing my date of birth? Well, Nowadays, it's also quite simple. Over the past couple of years, we've been developing web services that can be easily used by the end users and service providers to enable privacy-preserving authentication. So how would that work in an online scenario? Well, the first thing we need is an attribute or identity provider. It can be a state authority that issues ID cards, 
or any other organization that already has the data and can certify it. So for the zero-knowledge proof to work, they will need to issue you an electronic identity, or we call it a cryptographic credential, that can sit on your mobile phone, PC, or even in the cloud. And this is a crucial step, because later, when you use your credential, you can't lie about how old you are or who you are. And actually, different kinds of electronic identities are available already in more than 18 countries. So next, think about the service you want to access. Think about an online consultation with a doctor, governmental, social, or tax services. Or better, think about the services you don't want your children to access. So think about all kinds of services that require some kind of verification. Websites that sell alcohol or adult content, or even a movie service. So let's say you'd like to watch a movie that's rated R. So you need to prove that you're over 17 to watch it. So in the past, you would have to show your full credit card or full ID, or your kids could just simply tick the checkbox on the website without any verification. But with our technology, you can just simply log in to the website, similar like you would do with a social network provider, but in a much more privacy-friendly way. And then you'll be asked, would you like to prove to the movie service that you're older than 17? And if you confirm, then the crypto will do all the magic, transforming your full electronic identity into a fresh, unlinkable proof that only reveals that you're 17 years old and nothing, nothing else. And it's very important that your identi identity provider does know about how you use your credentials, because all this computation is done locally on your device, and now only you have control of which data leaves your device and where it goes. This is actually not only a win for the users, but also for the service providers, because now the service provider just doesn't know anything about me other than I'm old enough. So if all this information gets hacked from their service, the hackers will get nothing of value. And this actually saves service providers from a potential PR nightmare, not to mention the financial damages. According to Ponymon, an independent security institute, a damage from a lost or stolen record containing personal and confidential information is around $150 which is fine if you have like, just five clients, but for a company with 100,000 clients, it's a 15 million penalty. Well, sounds like magic and seems complicated. Well, it was when it was just invented 15 years ago. But a few months ago, we've changed this. We put the code in the cloud and on mobile devices, and now the application developers can just simply copy and paste the code into their apps, and they're privacy-friendly in seconds. So what does this mean for the future? Well, obviously, these data leak hacks and identity thefts that we read about regularly will no longer be headline news. But now you might be thinking, Maria, your technology sounds really great, but my data is already out there, so I'm an open book. But cryptography can change this. We can start sharing our data more carefully with people and services. And putting less data to a fewer places will reduce the risk. Actually, we all change our phones, phone numbers and credit card numbers, even our habits and hobbies. So moving forward, we can get back the full control. Money is not everything. And I think that our personal data is much more than just a currency. With the privacy-preserving technologies, we can get back the control and actually value our personal data properly. So let's make the Internet a safer place. Thank you. Thank you.